Hello, Pony Pals. Uh, sorry for such a long wait. I, I found that my hunt and jump videos were very much one of the same, and I feel like they weren't doing so well. So here we're back for another but different video. We are now doing an unboxing video, but not just of anything, like trying to keep it somewhat in the same theme. We are boxing my very first shipped box of Briar Sable Mates. Not only are these uh, Briars, but this is a family pack. So they claim that there will be real life genetics involved. So I've been excited about this package. I've been waiting for this package for weeks. I honestly was starting to think that the package wasn't coming, but here it is. I am so excited. So. It's my first time doing an unboxing video, first time unboxing something like this. I'm a little nervous, especially in the winter. I'm hoping that with the plastic I'm gonna get brittle and break, but here we go. So, <laughs> I got to see the picture, like on the website, it shows the pictures of the parents, uh, like the, the two adult horses that, that, that are in this Briar Stable Mate pack. Apparently there is a mystery foal though, which it will be genetically accurate with what the two adult horses could throw. So we unbox and we have it in paper, like pretty nice paper. I can like use this for drawing the chart. Okay, there is a note with my name on it. So I'm going to remove that. I'm sorry, I'm just not to that level yet. And I'll just take it out. If I can. Like they made it very snug so they don't move. These are the horses for Briar Sable Mate family number 14. So we have our black and then we have another in the back. So I'm going to move the box. Now, I'm like, part of me just really wants to go into this. On the other hand, there's something about reverence with briars. Like, I don't want to even destroy the box that much. I want to be treated with respect. Okay. Okay, so they are kept in there. This is nice. I did like a paint and play briar stable elite set that I got earlier. Like that wasn't a shipped one. Like that's why I like kind of consider this like a first. But we have several. There we go. Now we get them out. Oh, it's gonna be very tricky. I'm trying not to show you. Oh, just yet. That was a surprise. I'm not even trying to look at the full too much right now. Let's look and see the parents first. Well, here we go. Here's a new exciting YouTube video of me failing to argue with wires. But I don't know, like, like fortunately, like when I was doing girls camp, we did, we, we did focus somewhat on knots, but I feel like Boy Scouts focus a lot more on knots, but at the same time, knots are not wires. And okay, I need to be careful. If I get too excited here, I could break this horse. Like, first of all, this is a briar. Don't break the briar. Second of all, I have not been waiting for weeks for this horse. 
But yeah, these horses are definitely secure. The paint and play ones, like they were just like in a plastic mold sort of thing and unbox them and they kind of are like falling out. They were not broken, but these, you can definitely tell the fire put. I might not be able to. I'm trying to think if I have cutters. Actually, wait one moment. I'm going to see if I have something where I can just cut through this and we can get going. If not, we might just have to show these in their little thing. So I'll be right back in a moment. Voila, we are back. And with magic, the things are cut. So now just work on this first one. I think she is the mare. There we go. And I cut it by so Let's get these wires off of you. Okay. Like this is like way more of an experience than I expected it to be. Like something about the briars, like like I think it can be widely understood and accepted that briars are different than just plastic flowers. Like, it is so weird looking and I'm painted by it's like, wait, this is a plastic horse, but these are not just a plastic horse. So we have our first horse, our black horse, and we have our second horse. So let's put that aside for now. So, we have actually that's so we have our surprise pool and it's supposed to be something that's genetically accurate for these two horses but first of all let's have some fun for a little bit let's figure look at and figure out how much what we can figure out with the genetics of these two horses first the tricky thing though first because like the genetics a lot of people like to think of the genotype of like what are the alleles, which are like the different types of a gene that a horse could have? Like which ones do they have? Like, do they have the done gene? Do they not have the done gene? But first of all, like a genotype is something you find. It's like either from mapping out to, or from a lot of work with observation from multiple generations, which fortunately we have with our foal, or it is something that you get through a genetic test. We are not doing any genetic tests with plastic briar horses. If we did, we probably wouldn't like the results. So we have these horses. So we are, what we're gonna look at instead of the genotype, we're gonna first look at the phenotype, which is the outward appearance. Like we don't have a genetic test saying that this horse has the black genes, but we can look at it and say that it is a black horse. So this is the phenotype, which will help give us more of a clue of the genotype or so, yeah. Now I will say that most, most of my experience with mapping out the genetics of horses is from the game Hunt and Jump. It tries to be very accurate, but there are some things, especially with things which aren't as which are newer and not as standardized yet, where we use, where I'm gonna use Hunt and Jump notations, such as the various types of agouti, which makes a horse bay or brown or something like that. But let's first look at this horse. We have our black horse. No, 
no dorsal stripe. Like it's a very nice black horse. It's got two white socks. It has a snip. This is a very nice, pretty horse. Now the first thing with a horse is like, but like with genetics for like really anything to start out with, like the things with hair really, like you have two different types of pigment proteins, which can help make different styles of colors. You will have eumelin, which will create black base coats or femelin, which will make red base coats. So eumelin would be denoted with a capital E. Femelin, a lowercase e. This horse is a black horse, so we know that it is a eumelin-based horse or a black-based horse. So we will give her a dominant, a capital E. Eumelin is dominant. Now, but every horse has, but this is her phenotype. She has a eumelin phenotype. Genotype, she has two alleles. Since she has, since eumelin is dominant, we do not know whether she has one or two copies or, or not. So we are going to have, so, so far, like we're just gonna put a spot for eumelin. So she is a black base horse. Now here we can see some things. So there's a goody. So a goody is, a goody is whether or not the horse Brown or not? Okay, I just realized that this is turning up backwards. So I'm going to stop writing because that's just, uh, not writing, but I'll stop writing words. But a goody, this horse has, is a bay, or is not a bay, it is a black. A black horse with a goody will show up as brown or bay or something. So since this horse is black, we know that for a goody, it has, it has the recessive non-agouti traits. So it has, it's recessive for agouti. Okay, I really need to figure out how to turn this around. I don't know how to write backwards though. I might, I don't know. Let's go on further. Like this horse obviously has no done, so we can just cross off that she doesn't have any genitals. As far as cream goes, a black with one copy of cream will still look black. A black with two copies of cream would be a perlino or something. So we know she does not have two copies of cream, but she might have one. So as far as cream, we'd have a question mark and a dash because we don't know that she has cream at this point but we know she does not have two. We do not, we know that this horse does not have any gray because she is not a gray. Gray is very dominant. As far as the kit or white extension jeans, she's got her snip and her two socks. So I would put her down as white 20, which is a very minimalistic white, white spotting jean linked with socks and white facial markings. But we do not know if it's one copy or two. This is the genetics of this horse. She is a bay, actually she's a black. She might have one copy of cream. She has white 20. But we know, but we know that there's a lot of, there, 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 are, there are some things we don't know. We don't know if she has one copy of black or two. We don't know if she has cream. But there's a lot of things we do know. She is not a roan. She does not have avocado. She does not have done. We don't know anything about darkening genes because darkening genes can only do so much darkening when it's on black. I cannot tell you how much darkening is on this black, but she is a very pretty black. Now let's look at this one. This one 
is a dun. You can tell by the facial stripe, about the fact that we have lighter at the base of the tail, the frosting in the mane. We have striping on the legs, darker face, lighter in the ears. This is a very, very pronounced dun. Now dun lightens the coat, but if you look like the dorsal stripe is where the dun is not lightened. So if you look at that there, we have a brown horse. It's a very dark brown horse, but also like the darker parts of the mane and tail also aren't lightened. So since they're the same color as the dorsal stripe and they're brown, this is, this wouldn't, this is, this, this looks like this is not a bay. Like this could, like this look could be the look of a bay or Gria dun Appaloosa, but this horse doesn't look Appaloosa either. It doesn't even have varnishing patterns on it. So I think it's safe to say that this is not an Appaloosa. It's not a black face horse. I would call this a red liver dun, which is like red liver, like this is a chestnut. So this is, we know that both of its alleles for the human extension are recessive, giving it the female end condition for a red base coat. We know that this horse has done because I've already, the things I've already gone over, very pretty done. We know that Like once again, we have a star and we have socks. So this horse has white 20. Now the fact that this is a liver, this means that this horse will have both sori genes, which are a darkening gene, and dense famelin, which is an extra darkening gene linked mostly to famelin and semfemelin. So this horse has like three or four darkening genes. But we know that this horse could not throw black. We know that this horse has at least one copy of Dunn, maybe two, like it's a very class of classic example of Dunn, but they don't need two copies to show it. Like it has either one or two copies. We absolutely know that this horse does not carry cream because cream on a chestnut or family based horse make some palomino, which would make a white mane and tail. Like it has lightning because of done, but it's not white. Therefore, this horse does not have cream. This horse does not have roan, does not have gray. Since this horse is feminine though, we have no clue what agouti extensions it has because agouti genes, which make them bare brown, only affect black base horses or eumelin condition. So we have some very, like, there's a lot of things these horses are not. There's a lot of things that these horses can be. Like we've got, we, we have both, like, depending on whether or not this one here is homozygous or heterozygous for black, we could have a black or red base horse. We could have a dark horse because of this one has tons of darkening genes on it. It probably, it could definitely, definitely has a really good likelihood of having white 20s, so like facial and leg markings. At least 50% shot of gun. Like whether or not this horse is heterozygous or homozygous, either half the foals or all the foals it produces would have done. Whether or not it's, Homo, uh, what, it's like, yeah, like it could have cream, it could have various things that are hidden. And this is what we know right now. So, the moment of truth. We're gonna take this full. This full is not tied in with wires, just tape. Actually, let's move this. That sketch pad was a failed 
try. I'm sorry, people. I'm Sam's now like write out all the fun stuff with the genetics. So we have let's move a little these two horses. This falls very well taped in there. I don't want to start its legs. There we go. And our full. Is a bay. So. Let's look at this. Let's look at it more closely. Like, we have our foal. It's showing very much the agouti condition, which proves that this red roan had, not red roan, it's red done, had to be hiding agouti underneath. Mm, because the black obviously did not have a goody, so the goody had to come from this horse. But it is very likely this horse. You check no dorsal stipe. It is not a dun. It has the face markings and the leg markings for a goody. Uh, not for a goody for white twenty though. So wait a minute. I'm looking at this. It could be a light honey bay. Or if you really want to look at it, like this horse has ton, like, like this would be a light bay, okay? But this horse is going to skiv throw at least one kasori, one dense feminine. We have no clue how many suris or dense feminines this horse has because it's black. So it could be throwing it too. So we're probably looking for a dark version of whatever color this horse is. And if you look very, very closely, like you have yellow highlights. So guys, I think that this horse is not a true bay. I think this horse is a sooty buckskin, which a buckskin is not what you would think would come out of a red dun and a black mare. But as I said, the mare could have one copy of cream. She can't have two, but all you need, like she can only throw one copy of cream to the full. And this full obviously, like if it's a buckskin, all buckskins only have one copy of cream. If we have two copies, they turn into more whitish horses. The like Carmelo's Perlino's, like I think Carmelo's for Yumelin and Perlino's for, or like Carmelo is Femelin and Perlino is Yumelin, but I'd have to double check. But this horse would only have one copy of cream, and there is a possibility of one copy of cream. It's got his goody hidden in this horse. It would have gotten black base from the black. And it either has a copy of white 20 from either one or possibly both of its parents. So this is a very surprising full out of these, but very, but realistic too. Like this could very totally come out of these two horses. So it comes to show to you how crazy, ah, oh no, stay alive little full how crazy genetics really is and how unexpected it is. One of the reasons why I love genetics because you'll get thrown curveballs you never would have expected. So yeah, welcome to the unboxing and very rambling genetic overview of Briar Sable family number 14. They say that these are made with real horse genetics in mind. They are, or at least it's possible. <coughs> I'm sorry. But it is not what you've expected. <coughs> sorry. 
my throat's dry. I'm gonna have to get a drink of water after this. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that this was a fun video, different from before, but sometimes different is fun. Different is fantastic. Please like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think, what you would like to see next. Have a wonderful day.